Welcome to the 25-8 Studios podcast recorded from the stewed at 25-8. Um, so do you want to tell us about today, Stacey? Yes, we had <laughs> a, a friend of mine who I met on the Ship Hop I Love the 90s tour. He was He's the official DJ for the I Love the 90s tour. And uh, I, I saw him as soon as we got on the cruise ship. He was like doing his thing, DJing. He was amazing. Um, and then you see him in all the pictures. He's the guy next to Vanilla Ice. He's the guy next to his sister, Spinderella from Salt and Peppa. Um, Isn't this so weird? It's so cool. I mean, it was so cool. And the best part was is when he gave me his phone number, it started off with 570. I went, what? No, it didn't. Did it really? <laughs> yes. It was like, well, yeah, well, you know, we I should have you on the podcast, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here, what's your phone number? 570. What? You're from Northeast PA? He's, yeah, how do you know? I'm like, my number starts at 5702. So it was just like instant friendship after that. He was so professional, so amazing. Everybody loved him. Everybody had nothing but great things to say. And he was just amazing and, and wonderful to everybody. So I'm so excited that we were able to have him today, especially knowing that he also got to hang out with Tupac, which... You'll hear oh, about. You'll hear about. It's just amazing. Stacy, oh. Stacy's head exploded. It did. And like into like this, this celestial light. <laughs> I don't <laughs> fan out for much, but I'll tell you what. When you say Pac that got you going, oh, Pac always gets me going. Pac is my favorite. He always has been. I even did like a project my senior year of high school on why what Tupac was, that about? was. It was how I thought Tupac was still alive, which. Is debatable and totally different topic, but <laughs> I love him. And I graduated high school and got my master's degree, so my Tupac did you, theory did worked. You get, did you get a good grade on I your- I did. I had like a 99, and I think that probably the 1% was like probably because my teacher was like, he's dead. And I'm like, no, he's not. Did you <laughs> Wait, did you do like the Oliver Stone like expose? On oh my God, I had everything. I was, funeral got canceled. There was no death certificate. I mean, we went into it and I was just, you know, always, always secretly hoping that he's still alive. Like Elvis. So, <laughs> D- DJ Bourne was here, and his son Isaiah, who just had a baby, uh, Ivy, which was really cool to talk about. I'm not a dad myself, but it was nice to talk to another dad. That didn't make any sense. <laughs> and then Tyler was here, taking photos. Yeah. Who you don't who you don't see or hear on the podcast, but we we yell at him a bit. <laughs> yes. Now he's Tyler's amazing. He's 18 years old and he is a go getter, like go getter. Yeah, he's a hustler. And he's one of those people that like you don't come across very often. But when you do, you just have to like be friends with them and just want to work with them. What was your favorite part of this podcast? Well, I mean, obviously, the Tupac. Tupac? <laughs> I yeah. like I like I, I, I really liked hearing about like just just how hip hop came about and then how he was mm-hmm. like, I, I'm a fan of history. So that was. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. I love, you know, people who've lived through it all, like been through the old school stuff and then also just like, you know, worked his way up. And, you know, like he talks about giving back to the community and like, you know, all sticking together and helping each other out. And I think that's important because the camaraderie is not there as much anymore. It's nice. It made me feel good about music again. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It really does. They're amazing. So. All right. You want to get started? Yes. Let's go with the intro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the Willie Nelson. <laughs> I love Willie. Do you like Willie? Hell yeah, mm-hmm. that's a Godfather. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? So like, wh- like I didn't, I would never, like I would never expect me to be a Willie Nelson fan. Why are you a Willie Nelson fan? Because I love his music and I love music and I love the way he smoked his weed. <laughs> 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 and me and him gotta meet each other soon. Well, he does it like unapologetically. He's not he's not one of those guys where he's he's just like, yeah, it helps me. And on top of that, my bus is run on leftover stuff from McDonald's. <laughs> True. I think he has his own brand of weed now. Does he really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is does. It called you Uncle know, Willie? You can actually uh, get your own string of weed. Strain, yeah. Wait, like as as like Stacy can get her own? I can get my own. <laughs> Stacy can get her own. You can get your own. Isaiah can get his own. Now, how do we? Now Tyler how do, can get his own. Now, how do we do that? Hell, if I know, if I knew that, I would <laughs> I'll, I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Please. I'll, I'll get back to you. I, I don't Thank smoke you. weed, but uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> gladly help friends. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, um, I, 
I just met you guys, what, 15, 20 minutes ago? <laughs> yes. Okay, how you and doing? I, I'm Mark. Really nice to hey, meet I'm you. DJ how about that? How about that terrible handshake I just gave I you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it was royalty. Like in 1965. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, thank you, sir. It was very nice to. It was yeah. very nice to meet you. Like some Southern Belle. That's um, a great pawn. Yeah, because I have a Bentley. Um, I have a Toyota. <laughs> Anybody see that spot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a pretty good spot during the Super Bowl there. Yeah. Um, so, Stace, how did you meet all of these these amazing <laughs> people? And for people that don't realize, uh, uh, right behind over here is the skinniest person I've ever my seen in my Tyler. life. Yes, with a Tyler. Really, with, his, with amazingly well-coiffed hair. Is yes, is the quiff, Tyler? The quiff is beautiful. The happy days here. <laughs> How about beautiful. him? He's like sixty-two pounds. I'm like, are you cold? He's like, no, man. <laughs> no, he was freezing outside. <laughs> Were you cold outside? <laughs> was it like? Was, was it like? Oh, for what I'm wearing, cold or or was it? <laughs> <laughs> so how did all you guys meet Stacy? Ha. <laughs> The cruise ship on Ship Hop, the ship I Love the Hop. '90s cruise. Woo! So what's what's Ship Hop? Ship Hop is a cruise that everybody, if you missed it, please come to the next one, 2019. Ship Hop had Salt and Pepper with Spinderella, Coolio, Naughty by Nature, Black Street. Wait, no digging. Vanilla was there? Ice. Black Street was there? Yeah. yeah. You didn't tell no me that. Doubt. Vanilla yes. Ice was there. Mm-hmm. Was he doing rock or was he doing Vanilla Ice did everything. Yes. He just he just mingled and had fun with everybody. It was just like a great vibe. Tone low. Oh my man, kid my and brother, play. kid and play. <laughs> Rob Bass. Uh, Rob Bass. Um yes. it's cool Modi. No. Was he on that one? It was DJ Cool. He was on cool. the other one. It was DJ, DJ Cool, cool sorry. Yeah. DJ Cool. Say, what do you say? So you just rattling off? No, the, you know? well, <laughs> because when I went and saw the I Love the 90s on tour, Cool Mo D was with All for One and Salt and Cinderella. Oh, yeah. All for mm-hmm. One, Color Me Bad. Mm-hmm. Dream On. <laughs> Dream I'm not going to go there. I can't say. <laughs> We're All for One fans here. What all these? for one, number one. All for one. Yes. <laughs> so, so ex- explain to me, like, what? So, what is this? This whole? It seems like to put a bunch of people with a bunch of artists that are like that we all grew up with. Stacey. What's that like on a? What's oh, that like? In it a, was in a, my in a, dream come true. Like in a sardine can. Yes, my everything. My mother like told me I couldn't do as a child. I was able to do on that cruise ship. <laughs> like, like what? Cheat on your homework? Well, no. <laughs> but they never. She never let me go and see concerts in the '90s when I was growing up. I mean, I was born in '83, so in the '90s, you know, I was like a teenager and going into high school, and I was never allowed to go and see concerts. It was just that was they were so against it, and so to be able to go back into like relive Is that where the it, devil lives. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Back then it could have, but on the ship it was just so much fun. It was like everything. Concerts every It was day, awesome. Every well, it was night. like every minute, wasn't it? It was it, somebody was playing there was somewhere. Something. Either yeah. we was DJs somewhere, there was um, a cooking show, salt getting to meet different people. I mean, it was just so much fun. It was. It was it a was great like, time. And it, and DJ or Downtown Julie Brown was there. Oh, like, yeah. She was doing Downtown all the... It Julie was just Brown. like the voice to the face. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, it's did like you hear that voice XM. and you were like, oh, what? Yes. I chased her down, actually, to get a picture with her because she was trying to get salt and pepper. Actually, when they were on um, on the top deck doing a show and I started and she just like hightailed it right in the middle of where everybody was dancing. I was like, I'll wait till she gets out because I'm not going in I there. Was say, she Steve. was a lot of fun. <laughs> Downtown so, Judy Brown, number mm-hmm. one. So how much alcohol was consumed on this 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 <laughs> endeavor? Not by you guys. I Never. Look at you. I didn't, I didn't even go. I just watched the Snapchat stories. That's all yes. I did. I, I really didn't drink because I had a lot of work to do. And I was just busy in my work and mingling with the fans and the people. We just had so much fun. And Tyler kept me busy. How about Tyler shooting photos of fish? Did you see all his fish photos? No. No. Do you know that's like his thing? Oh. Yeah, it's his thing. They're phenomenal. I was on the phone with him the other day, and he goes, oh, jeez. Ah, ah. So what's the matter? And he goes, a fish jumped out. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just really so wasn't like, expecting that. So not only is he like a great <laughs> photographer of like Y'all people. Y'all should see my face right now, fish. 
Yeah, and I thought it was the band. He's like, oh, I got to go shoot some fish later. And I'm like, the band? I'm like, the terrible band? And he's like, no, uh, fish, though. Oh, don't say that. We'll lose so many viewers. He, I'm telling you, dude, his stuff is like phenomenal no, fish. I know. His, his stuff is like phenomenal. Like every fish looks like a supermodel. Well, DJ Born- Which is weird for me to look at. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I talked to, to DJ Bourne yesterday, he's like, is Tyler coming? Because I want him there. And I'm like, yeah, he'll be there. Oh, you're going to learn some new stuff about Tyler today. Oh, I well, can't wait. That boy can take some pictures, y'all. Yes, he can. He can. Well, I saw somebody higher tire. That boy can take some pictures. I saw mm-hmm. his Instagram. Not a lot of fish. Scroll <laughs> down there. Uh, <laughs> this is like it's like in the bowels of your Instagram. It's like this is my true passion. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Things that breathe water. Um, <laughs> all right. So how did so where did you, where did you grow up? Brooklyn, New York. Pink houses. How did you get here? Because you're you're where are you living now? I live in Pennsylvania, um, West Hazleton, and how did I get here? Seems like a leap. Oh, man. The world trade went down. And, yeah. And it was just so much chaos in New York at the time, and my wife and my kids, like, you know, they was, we was getting tired of New York. It was just so congested and just too much going on, and we just wanted a new way of life, and we just... Chose Pennsylvania. Was 9-11 like the catalyst? Because I was supposed to go to school. Like, I was thinking about going to New York for school right around 9-11, and then 9-11 happened. I was like, that might not be possible now for me. Nope. Not at that time. It was crazy. Wow. (laughs) So how soon after 9-11 did you move? Um, Like, maybe six months later. I moved to Pennsylvania right after 9-11. That was devastating, but. So wait, so why, why did you look at other places? No. Nope. I'm just curious about why Hazelton. No. Nope. Um, no, we, w- no, we moved to Tamaqua. Yeah, oh, you weren't going to talk, but now you're talking. Oh, I'm all for it. Do you know how many people I have son. conned into saying Tamaqua, like when we're filming <laughs> down there? I say like it's pronounced sometimes. Tamaqua, just as purposely And when you're in New them. York, you hear about <laughs> Allentown, you hear about Stratton and Stroudsburg. You never hear about Tamaqua. No, it's just little town. I've been to Tamaqua, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It I is. think I went to a bowling tournament in Tamaqua. <laughs> we filmed no, a horror no, movie in Tamaqua. No, it wasn't Tamaqua. Tamaqua. It was hometown. <laughs> was it? Yeah, it was hometown. I always get confused between Tamaqua, Tamaqua got and Tawanda. There. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of far apart. <laughs> so wait, you moved to Tamaqua? For, I mean, was that like... I mean, you guys are like you my lived in the city your whole life. Yeah, my, my uncle lived out. Uh, well, his my brother. Uncle. My his brother, brother lived my out uncle. here. <laughs> He's like, come on. <laughs> Come on to Tamaqua. No, he, you know, he he came. He, you know, he showed us the area. We were like, oh, this is nice and quiet. This is what I wanted. Yeah. And I found the house and I just rented it. Is that a weird? Is that a weird change? Because it's like it's like for me, if like living like in that in the like outer suburbs to go live in oh, like Brooklyn to me would be like what? It was, yeah, it was a lot different. Stuff to. I think it was a lot different for my it. kids. For for me. I wanted to relax. Right. I didn't want the big city life, the traffic, the congestion of all the people. I didn't want my kids to grow up in certain environments, you know. And were you okay with that? Were you like, I, Dad, I don't want to go. Because uh, you were you were what at the 10? They had no other probably, choice, though. I was probably like 10, 11 years old. <laughs> and dad's like so, tough shit. Know, was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was, a lot, it was a lot to get used to. Being a minority in a small town like that. Well, plus so. there's cows. Plus there's cows, yeah. <laughs> and Amish. Horses. The Amish? And the yeah. Amish. On their, on their buggies? <laughs> yeah, yeah we've seen that, that before. <laughs> I mean, was that like a weird culture shock for you guys? Yeah. Just the weirdest like- thing that happened is when I was driving to Pennsylvania, I seen this sign saying Bear Crossing. B-E-A-R Crossing. <laughs> and then as we drive in a little bit more, I'm seeing this White guy, older white guy, and a younger, young his younger son, both of them got shotguns. I'm looking at my wife. <laughs> I'm looking at my kids. What did we do? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Brooklyn's safer. <laughs> where we at? This <laughs> yeah. don't look too good. <laughs> so where'd you go to high school? Tamaqua. I graduated from Tamaqua. So what? I mean, what was like? That's a weird. Like and your dad, so you've been you've been spending your whole life basically, right? All my life, yep. So when they're like, "What's your dad do?" 
You're like he's a, he's a, he's a dope DJ. Yeah, yeah. DJ. And they were all like, "No, he's not." Or were they? Or were they? <laughs> then I tell them who my aunt is, and like, yes. "Oh, well, who's your aunt?" And it's cooler, Spinderella. Aunt Spinderella. <laughs> <laughs> Spinderella. Spinderella, bring it up on time. <laughs> I, I Shout out to Spinderella. That. Shout out. <laughs> so wait, are you? So are you? <laughs> so your sister's Spinderella. Yeah, <laughs> but when I moved to Tamaqua. I was I was DJing on the side like it was a, like a night thing. I was doing different clubs. I was working at the Tamaqua schools. I was working at Air Products. Shout out to Air Products, one of my best companies I worked for. I was working for them for a while. Then things started going sour, and my sister said, "Come on the road with me." I'm like, "Okay." So then me and her started doing private shows, different different shows together and then well I can't imagine there's a lot of places to play up in Tamaqua no no (laughs) no no no. but the little (laughs) bars the little they were cool though the little clubs that I did play at I packed them and we had a great time yeah it was always a good time it was always a good time always a good time so I cut you off you said that fateful day you were talking about your sister she said come hang with me that fateful day where I was sitting in the dressing room and shout outs to Jimmy, my manager, and Tommaso, one of my best people. Jimmy came in the room and said, Yo, Born, you want a DJ? And I just looked at him, and it's a big arena. And I'm saying to myself, This is where I always wanted to be at. Right. So he said, You're not gonna get paid for this for a couple <laughs> of days, but if you do real good, we're gonna hire you. Really? Yeah. That's a leap of faith, though. Yeah, a little bit. Where it's like we're not going to pay you for the but, first couple of days. But <laughs> my my like all the things that I was thinking about right. when I was younger, and seeing the DJs, DJ Keith Watkins, um, Together Brothers, DJ Scratch, Spinderella do her thing, Kid Capri do his thing, Jazzy Jeff. I'm watching all of them do it on stage, and I'm like, I want to do that one day. And that faithful day, Jimmy knocked on that door and said, yo, you want to go on stage and DJ? And I said, yeah. And Spin was like, well, is he going to get paid? What's going to happen? <laughs> I didn't want to hear none of that. I just went right to the stage. And I just said, you know what? I'm just going to do my thing. And I had this Batman jersey on. Good choice. Right. It was a good mm-hmm. choice. Right. Good it choice. It was a good Batman. choice. I had this Batman jersey on, and when I came out there, the crowd went bananas, and I didn't even do nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just setting up the equipment. <laughs> and I looked at the crowd, and they looked at me, and somebody said, Batman, that's what's up. <laughs> no music. <laughs> Dead. And I'm like... Okay. <laughs> and I threw on the first song. I said something on the mic, but I forgot what I said, and boom. See, that's the, what do they call it? Like they, they call success when opportunity meets preparation. I would call been, it when the door knocks, open it up. Yeah, but I would have been in like a Care Bears jersey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I would have, if it was me, I would have walked out and they're like, no, yeah. no. It I could have been, I could have been so good. And I had this jersey on. And I was like, it could have been a Care Bear jersey, but I wasn't wearing no Care Bear jersey. You could have worn. I just well, that's just. It me. looks nice on you. I, I'm some say, <laughs> you know, but if I look at myself in the mirror, I'd be like, oh, what a what a terrible choice. What a terrible choice. Because I always yeah, buy like that, the goofy you T-shirts. You know what? And then it stuck with me. Everybody kept calling. It, it was like, so I forgot was my at? name was DJ. You know what? I forgot. You forgot where that was at? Yep. Because I'm high. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. <laughs> I don't even know. What so what year was that then? Um, Two years ago. So we in 2018. It was 2016. I mean, did that did that did that moment just take like a bump for you? It took off. Really? Yeah, it actually took off. So you've been like your whole life. You've been trying to like, and I'm not trying to downplay this. No, no, no. I played in thousands of weddings, thousands of parties, thousands of little. I I play in front of one person, and I will rock one person to ten thousand people. It doesn't make a difference how big the crowd is. You hire me to DJ, I'm going to DJ in front of one person to 10,000 people. It don't make a difference. It's still, but it doesn't like, it doesn't like hurt you emotionally to be like, oh, there's one person here. Or do you put on no, the same show? No, it don't matter. I put on the same show. Wow. It doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter. Me and Spin will put on the same show if there's nobody in there but the person that hired us. So how did you get involved in, like, being a DJ? Like, was, was that from being a kid, or was that, I like... was a little kid looking out my window on the seventh floor in the pink houses, and I was watching the DJs, DJ outside, DJ um, Together Brothers, the two um, guys that used to live in my building, they used to be outside DJing, and I used to watch them, like... It's like 200 people outside, and they're controlling all of them. One guy is playing the music. The other guy is on the mic and controlling. The crowd is saying what they're saying, having fun. Everybody's dancing and no trouble. And I, and I love music. And I'm like, I can do that. I want to do that. And Keith Watkins... <clears throat> he asked me to come to his crib. He was one of the main DJs in Brooklyn, killing it. I mean, doing all types of tricks, you know, right. with the turntables. And I, I used to love that. And he took me to his crib, and he actually practiced with me. Really? Mm-hmm. Cause not he said, like- you really want it, you're going to come get it. I mean, is that nice to have it like a, like somebody do that for you? Because usually, I mean, I don't want to speak for Tyler, but usually like photo- other photographers are like, I ain't helping you. You know what I mean? No, We're, you know, real DJs stick with each other. Real DJs want to help the other DJ. Like DJ Bro Rap, when I'm on the stage, he's getting played DJ. DJ Bro Rap, love him to death. My man Mark from um, Tone Lokes DJ. He, we all help each other. We all, if there's a problem with spins, um, um, turntables, a problem with my turntable, problem with we all chip in. We that, all chip in. So it's like and, a big family. Yeah, now I got a family. My daughter, DJ, DJ Neff. My son, Isaiah, he's sitting here all quiet. He DJs. <laughs> Come um, on, hype He man. only talks about Tamaqua. That's all he'll talk um, about. Tamaqua. Spin's daughter, <laughs> Chrissy Ray. Spin's daughter, Chrissy Ray. She DJs. She's popping out in Dallas. She's really killing it in Dallas. My daughter's DJing in Pens- um, Philadelphia. She's killing Philadelphia. Was she there so, for the parade? Yeah, she was there. She was there for the parade. Was she actually DJing for um, um, Milena Fiona, the R&B singer. Nice. I don't mean to sound stupid. (laughs) Milena Fiona, yeah. I grew up on grunge. No, I've heard of her. No, I've heard of her. She actually just won a Grammy. Did she really? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. She was DJing her um, her party February 14th. 15th, 15th. February 15th. February 15th. So you in Philly, go out to my daughter's DJ Neff party. (laughs) You're like a Google calendar in your head. Sometimes. sometimes. It's amazing. (laughs) Sometimes. Sometimes. So who spun first? You or your you or your sister? Okay, here we go again. <laughs> this is the million question I asked. Should I, should all I not the time. should I not ask no, that no, question? No, I want to no. ask you questions because no one's ever asked. Everybody asked that one question. They asked that one simple question. Who DJ first? The the deal was I didn't know she was DJ. No shit. And she didn't know I was DJ. <laughs> I was practicing under DJ Keith Watkins <clears throat> when she had a boyfriend that was one of the DJs out in the projects where we used to live at called the Pink Houses. She used to DJ out you know, with him, AAD. That was her boyfriend. And he used to teach her how to DJ. And I guess there was an audition for her to audition for Salt and Pepper. And so you, so both of you were, were starting it at the same time without either one of them knowing it. Right. Right. Ain't wait, that so, something? Wait, so what was Ain't so, that what, something? so what was it like when you guys first realized because you were I, doing I'm it? the oldest and she's the youngest. <laughs> so I was doing my own thing. I was always out the house. Right, I, right, right. The older brother they always gone and right, right. taking you know, making sure everything's right. She was doing her dance classes in the center, Pink Houses Center, and she was DJing on the side. I didn't even know it. And then when she got the audition for Salt and Pepper to be in the group with Salt and Pepper, I still didn't know it. Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm a street dude. I'm out in the street. Right, 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 right. I'm making sure my 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 my, my sisters and brothers is good. I know they're good because we got the craziest, toughest father ever. <laughs> Rest in peace. My I love my father and mother. I miss them so much. But and my little sister Andrea, definitely miss you. But yeah, what what was it like when you guys both realized at the same time that you were both doing that? It was funny. DJ Eddie F came to the crib and my sister had turntables in her room and I'm looking, I'm like, what's, what's going on with this? And I'm hearing them DJ and I'm knocked on the door. I said, yo, I can DJ too. They were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so can I come in? She said, come on in. And then we started DJing and we were doing it with vinyls, 45s and vinyls, no Serato, 
No computers. All this had to come from the top of our heads. I mean, there's a magic to that. There's an art to that. There's that's not like because I try to. You DJ- could call it magic. I call it an art. <laughs> What, what, well, magic is art, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I, I yeah. like we like I went to school at, at this school called Full Sail down in Orlando, and there's a lot of there was a lot of musicians that would go there that wanted to, you know to do like you know what you did, and you know they'd have like turntables set up, and they're like, "Hey, why don't you try it?" And I'm like, Bleh. and I'm like, <laughs> I am terrible at this. I don't even know because it looks so easy when you watch someone do it. You're like, oh, I could yeah. I could do that, but then when you do it, it's like. I am terrible. It took me a long, I don't know if it was just me, but it took me a long time to learn how to blend. That means to put two records together. And that's that's off of like the BPMs and stuff, or is yeah. that? Yeah, it's off of BPM, but we didn't have BPMs at the time. It's all in your head. It was all in my head. And I used to ask Ben, because Ben used to you know, show me how to, to blend. I used, do I have it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Spin walked by, do I got it? Nope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's go. Damn, she just being hard on me. But it was she was right. me a lot better. Yeah. So then one day we had they like spin was doing her parties. I was doing my street thing. And one day I got it. I actually got it. And she came to the crib one day and I was DJing. She said, Whoa, you you doing it to me? I started <laughs> DJing together. It was just so much fun, man. So you mentioned your dad like being tough. Like what is what's like my I, dad was the heart and soul of music. <clears throat> like he had everything from Ozzy Osbourne to Lennon Skinner to um, Four Tops. Any groups you want to name, my father had all their albums. Even country, country music. <laughs> so he was like a connoisseur of he, all yes, things music. Yes, yes, he loved music. It was, but when rap music came out, Sugar Hill Gang, he was like, what? the heck is this? <laughs> and you were just I don't just know if we can them. curse on, on air. Yeah, you, no, yes. you can curse on this. You this know, is fine. But he like, what the fuck is this shit right here? <laughs> and you were just with the Sugar Hill Gang like two weeks right, ago out in Los Angeles, the, right? Yes, I was. Yeah. Wait, how weird is that where your dad's like, what is this? And then you're hanging yeah, out with yeah. Then run DMC. Then, you know, all the different artists. He started getting into it and my mother was like, I kind of like this. This is cool. <laughs> my mom was always cool with the music and everything. It was just, it was a lot of fun. So you were up. so you were there when like hip hop started like coming into the culture. Like you like yes. you, you can remember that. Oh yeah. Oh, Cuz I watched documentaries just, about it all the time. When hip hop was growing and the Run DMCs, the Jay-Zs, the Nas, it just started growing. What 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 do you Salt, like Peppa, what, Cinderella? What, what do you think about that? That period of time, like, what do you like? I thought you're too that young was to remember. A, yeah. <laughs> My son may have been too young to remember, but I thought that was the best time, dude. Because everybody was outside dancing, partying, having so much fun with the music. <sighs> and then the millennials just came and fucked it all up. <laughs> then the 2000s I blame you. Came. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm an '80s baby. <laughs> then the 2000s came. <laughs> Well, it's like, they, that's like Backstreet Boys and stuff. Now, honestly, when Nas came out with the record, um, Hip Hop is Dead, mm-hmm. right? I was like puzzled. Like, what the, what is Nas talking about? You know, because hip hop can't die. You know, right. we hip hop. You know, right. everything we do from dressing to the way we walk to our style, we hip hop. Right. Wow, what you talk? Boy, did I get a reality check. <laughs> now I see what Nas is talking about. Thank you for for enlightening me, Nas. Well, let's talk about that because we, we're in a recording studio, right? right? And And, like, we're recording an album right now all on tape. So we're not even, like, we're going through the computer, obviously, because that's how you do most of the stuff. But, like, okay. all the drums are getting tracked on tape. All the guitars are getting tracked on tape. And we're going to try to do all the outboard gear for, like, all the effects and stuff instead of just using the effects in the computer. Like, we're going old school on it because... I can't believe it sounds better. Listen, like what DJ Scratch always teaches us, and he got Scratch Vision. Y'all, if y'all, if y'all want to know, please get on Scratch Vision. Scratch Vision is that on will YouTube? Teach you. It's it's on um it's on yeah, he got his own. App. Is oh, his own oh, that's right. He Wasn't that on app. your Instagram, right? With um the yes. what, from Run DMC. Yes, 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 yes. And we all Scratch is the godfather. Scratch is the man. He's the god of turntables. Um, he teaches us, you know, like when you 
playing these this music, you not only have to play it for you, you got to play it for everybody else. You got to appeal to your crowd. Right. It's not all about you. It's not mm-hmm. all about you. And then with the old school music, we used to dig in the crates to find that certain good beat and make a record with it. But that's up nowadays, on stage. Like sometimes you're just like, oh, I got to find something right now for the next. Yeah, but nowadays they just using any drum machines. Any um, so okay, so let me are you are you are you gonna you're not gonna stay cautious on this question, I hope. Okay. Cause I when I grew up on like hip hop and and like I, I like right around the time that you're talking about was where I was like, uh, I don't know if I like it. Like what's happening right now. Like I don't know if I like that. Cause I grew up on like obviously the chronic, like that came out at the same time as like Pearl Jam oh and God. you know, like but I knew NWO and I, but I was a it. huge oh Bone Thugs and Harmony Love. fan. Mm-hmm. I loved Bone Thugs. Oh, my I goodness. loved them. Biggie um, came out with. Him. Yep. Oh my. I'm and a then they huge were doing, Tupac fan. They were doing. Huge. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't realize how good Tupac was until after he passed away. Yo, Tupac. My Tupac. One, Tupac. <laughs> Tupac is my number one artist. That's why I love you, DJ Born. <laughs> that is why we get along now. Of I understand. All time. And I actually got to. Smoke a blunt with Tupac. <gasps> Did you? Oh my yes. God! Wait, Stacy just Stacy just lit up like a supernova. I literally yes. did my tell her all about this. Oh. From Naughty oh, by Nature, I love Tretch. Introduced me best. to Tupac, and we went outside and we smoked, and we had such a great time. Was he as intelligent as I think he was? Very much. Very. You're much. now my idol. <laughs> very much. Very much intelligent. I mean, a real like my son is sitting here. He would just sit here, hang out. Chill with everybody, cause in, cause I've cause cause it was about like six months ago where I got on like this big Tupac. I want to watch every interview Tupac ever did, and by the end of it, I was like, this guy should have been president. Yeah. Yo, check this out. <laughs> Let me tell you how I met Tupac. Yes. Yes. It was at the Water Man video, <laughs> Salt and Pepper Spinderella's video. Water right? Man, Water. I love that video. I right. Know. I know. Now we sitting up in this room. They they um Tretch and somebody else was playing pool, and there was a window ledge. And I went to the window ledge to sit down, and I'm sitting next to Tupac. He had a hoodie on, his um, gold chain with the gun right, right. hanging mm-hmm. out. And I'm sitting there for 15 minutes with him, and me and him just talking about this normal stuff. And Tretch came over and said, yo, Tupac, this is born, born, this is Pac. When he took the hoodie off, you had no oh, idea? Yo, I had no oh idea. Oh, my God. <laughs> because he had his hoodie on. He was, like, looking down. And, you know, I guess he was doing something with his, um, at the time, we had a Motorola. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was back at the time. And it was crazy. I was like, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> so he like he seen the blunts. I had some you no know, blunts rolled up in my pocket. Right. He said, What you doing with those? I said, Yo, I'm gonna go downstairs to smoke. He said, Well, let's go. And we all went downstairs and we smoked. <laughs> oh my god, you, you're my hero. Do you remember what you guys now? talked about? <laughs> No, I'm just fascinated I'm by high, Tupac. Dude. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I remember what I talked about yesterday. <laughs> All right, so but it's Tupac. <laughs> so what's the- I know, I know, I know. I should have, re- I should have remembered that. What? But you know, like nowadays, you just want to record everything. Like it's pop. You know, you want to put it on record. Yeah, voice memo on my phone yeah. immediately. Yeah. Day, I need to remember you this. Record nothing. <laughs> what? So what do you think when you talk about Nas? Like, what do you think? Because you you were trying to allude to some like when he came out with rap, would he, he hip hop is dead or rap is dead? Nas actually enlightened everybody that is dying. And what did and what did what did he it's attribute like, that to? It's like you know our real hip hop, right? It's not like it's telling stories no more. They're not telling the stories no more. They're not telling what's about reality, what's going on in the world no more. Yeah, because it changed to me it lyrically. It changed so. Oh, it did. It was it all about like it was so all much. about like. Already had like now it wasn't about like about what they have now. Yeah, now it's just like about like that. bragging about right. like I have three Xboxes and I'm like, I, how does that relate? To I'm me not going to say it, no say no names, but this one artist really made it bad for them because when it was an interview, they asked him. I know you might have heard it. They said, um, I'm not going to say the man's name. They said, how do you feel about giving back to your community? He said. Hey, my community got to do what they got to do. I'm up here trying to make it for me. So it's all about me now. 
and he walked away. When I seen that interview, I was so, like, really mad about it because in our world where we came from, yeah. we get back. Yeah. We go back to our community. We get back if we can. You know what I'm saying? We'll do anything from benefits to anything to get back to our community, to help our community, to talk to our community. This young generation, I don't know what's going on anymore, man. Everybody's out for themselves. And that's the way it seemed to me. I mean, was that kind of, is that kind of heartbreaking to you? It is very heartbreaking because the community, the one who pays your way, they buy your albums, they buy, they, they come to your shows, they represent you. What, let me ask Isaiah. What's up? What, <laughs> why does your generation do this? <laughs> My generation? Don't, don't consider me What's a wrong with your generation? Yes. Don't consider me a millennial. <laughs> no, I have to agree with him, though, because everybody's like that. And it's just terrible. And it's like, how do you even change it? Because then when you try to change it, they don't even listen to you anyway because they're so fucking ignorant. You know? I think as an artist, you, you know, have an obligation. Stacey, you actually hit it right on the point. They are so <laughs> for fucking ignorant. It's yeah. so for but why? But, but I, I just don't understand how like people can get success and the success. It's not. It's not like they invented like a new snowboard or something. Like they're out there, you know. And you know what? They don't even give props to the old artists. To, not to the older artists. And I don't call them old. How do uh, how do play say this? He say um. Old school. We we we. Well, we, they're influences. Veterans. We 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 may be the veterans, salt and pepper and everything, but this new artist is out for themselves. They're not even giving the props to the veterans that have been here that made their way for them. And they're using a lot of their beats too, and a lot of their songs, which is like crazy. Like a lot. Of, it is crazy. It is. Crazy. And then they won't they, even say anything or thank you or you know they'll just be like, oh hey publisher, make sure you pay off whatever you need to pay off, and then we won't talk yeah. about it. <laughs> yep. I mean, how does I mean I mean you're you guys are with people in this community. I mean, do do in the music community. I mean, is there a lot of people that feel that same way? I don't know how everybody else feels. I don't even ask that question to other people. I don't know how they feel, but I know how I feel. I know that if you help me, I'm going to help you. Well, I, I also think there's a, a, a massive, because cause hip-hop was was under fire in, like, you know, the, the early 90s and, you know, N.W.A. and They like, a said when but, hip-hop but the, first came out, hip-hop was not going to make no money. There's going to be a bunch of garbage and... Man, listen, hip hop bring it to where it's at now. Well, it's modern day story. It's 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 mm-hmm. the modern day storytellers. Like, and that's what it was. It was like when, when I listen. No, when I listen to like it, <laughs> modern day tours, he, he'll tell a story in a heartbeat. Yeah, and then and but the Rock people him will tell a story in a heartbeat, and that's not happening today. It just no. seems like it just seems like a, a bunch of situations just no, thrown together not in a song. No, it's not It's not. It's not going mm-hmm. down like that today, dude. It's all about them. It's all about how much jewels, meaning rings and chains and cars and girls. I don't call them hoes. I don't call no hoe, no girls hoes or bitches. I respect what Pac said. We should never call our women hoes and bitches. So the women out there, they portray themselves the way they portray themselves. But we don't look at them. You know, you ain't supposed to just look at them like that. This, that's them. You know. So who were you? Influ- who who influenced you? What do you mean? Like who? Like who were? Like who were the artists at the time? Where you're like Tupac? Yes, Tupac. That's it. That's it. Tupac. Tupac actually. Yes. Is, Maybe you're saying about like being on the seventh floor, like watching all those guys. Oh, down there. Uh, yeah. At like that people, time, it like it influenced DJs, you to get the, in. The DJs. The DJ. It wasn't really the songs they was playing. It was the way they was playing it, and the way they kept the crowd motivated and hyped and happy. That motivated me to do to be in the DJ world. And it was never like go fuck yourself. It was just very like it was it was every it was everybody's together. No, because like a when family. I went out there and I asked together brothers, I asked them, "Can I carry your crate? Can I walk with you? Can I be with you?" They were like, "Sure, come on. You want to learn?" And look at Keith Watkins. He said, "Yo, you want to come to my house? I'm gonna teach you how to DJ." See, real DJs stick with each other. They 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 want to combine. They don't get jealous of what you can do better, what I can do better. You know, we just got love for each other. We love the art and the craft that we do. So there's no animosity when it comes to success. Uh-uh, not, not, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. Um, That's awesome. What'd you lose? <clears throat> oh, <there. laughs> 
<laughs> Y'all should see me. I'm looking around for my water. They'll see it. <laughs> yep, they're right, right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. He's recording. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Who's recording? Right there. right there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't even Bro. see that. Yeah, that's connected right to the NSA. Um, no, so. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. No, I'm totally kidding. Um, so what was it like growing up with your dad, you know, doing doing what he does? Because in all reality, like, it's a very uncon- unconventional way to have, like, like, what your dad does. Me, I like when when I grew up, I like watching him and stuff like that. If I wasn't outside playing basketball, I was inside watching him and my aunt DJ. That's it. So like your your two extracurricular activities were like I'm gonna play ball or I'm gonna play watch basketball them. Basketball and DJ. That's were you good? On. DJ? No, basketball. basketball. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, DJ. Yeah, I was good at DJ. Yeah, but you just layups were terrible. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't terrible, but I wasn't. You know, I didn't meet up to everyone's expectations. So did he try to influence you on like DJ? You, know, you got to listen to like these people, and you got to listen to what like just artists or, or DJ? Oh yeah. no, 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 no. I you know you know I can listen to whatever I want to you know. I was never told to listen to certain things, you know. Did he let you have eclectic tastes like his dad had? Yeah. So what were you, do, what were you listening to? I do to? now. I do now. I do now since I grew up in Pennsylvania and stuff like that. But I'm growing so up, sorry. <laughs> I do now. I have I have a lot. I love my state, now. but it's weird. Yeah. It's a weird state. It is weird. I used to. It is. When when they was growing up, I used to ask them, "Don't touch my turntables in my mixer." The one because, rule. Because yeah, because I wanted to show them how to do it. Never happened. <laughs> That's like the one rule of parenting. Never happened. Don't tell them not to touch it because it's the first thing they're I going came for. Home <laughs> and I heard the music outside. They had it low, but I heard the music. And I stood outside for a little bit and I'm like, I'm going to leave them alone. And I came in and him and my daughter was practicing Hot in Here by Nelly. Oh, yeah. And it was backspinning it. And I swear, I stood at the doorway. I'm like, what y'all doing? I just wanted to scare them. <laughs> but I was so happy to hear what they was doing. And see them, like, they was actually motivated to DJ. After that fateful day, I told them, go ahead, do what y'all want to do. I mean, I mean, real, like, quiet in that doorway, were you a proud parent? Very proud. Very, very proud parent. I was looking at them like, wow. Then they started really, really practicing a lot. Yeah, then we, yeah, we I, really got into it after I a watched while. my son, and I said, yo, Isaiah, I'm doing this party at this um, little bar. He was old at the time. I said, you want to DJ with me? He said, yeah. I'm like, okay, you got the courage. <clears throat> Let me tell y'all something. This man used to open up for me, and I used to go, Damn, I gotta come behind this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this motherfucker made my job hard. <laughs> Motherfucker. That's awesome. That's a proud parent moment. And I was like, oh man. Then my daughter, I invited her one day to do a show with me and my son. And she killed it. I'm like, y'all two just go ahead. Y'all just go ahead and be I'm just gonna host. I'm just gonna be the host for the night. Does that like, especially with your sister and you, does that make, like, if she, like, are you guys always in, like, when you go, damn, that was good? Like, do you oh, have yeah, to, do you time. have to do better? Yeah, yeah. We, and yeah, it's we, not like yeah, out of yeah, spite all, or anything. No, yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not out of spite, but it just, you know, it makes us better at DJing, you know what I mean? So, so it's know, her we're, doing we're, something we're, to motivate yeah, you. We're not always at competition, but, you know, but we're always trying to make each other better and stuff Then like I got that. another little son named Malik. He's a, like a big. He liked to work out a lot. You know, he's a trainer. He liked to train. He was scratching, and all he wanted to do was scratch, 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 scratch. <laughs> so he told DJ Scratch, listen, we're going to battle one day. I said, don't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't even do it. Did they ever get to do it? No, nah, they never got to do it. <laughs> you got to Facebook Live that. Yes. <laughs> if they ever do it, go at each other, I got to Facebook Live that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, wait, are you playing it? Where are you playing this weekend? She told me you might be playing somewhere this weekend. This weekend I'm in uh, Connecticut. Please don't ask me where at in Connecticut, <laughs> but I'm in Connecticut with Salt and Pepper. Do you like what? How does that work? I like, open you- up for them, and me and Jimmy do this, you know, a, a routine all the time. I mean, Jimmy, my Mayus, that's my man. That's 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 my boss. That's my man. That's my boy. And shout outs to my manager. 
You know I ain't gonna forget you. <laughs> you know I can't forget you. Katrina, she's been doing excellent, 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 excellent work. So you literally, like two years ago was that fateful day, and now you're just like everywhere. Yeah. Is that weird? It was. Is it still weird? Like, do you still like... It's like a job now. It's like, it's, it's actually... I tell everybody, what if you're working in Burger King, McDonald's, Subways, wherever you're working at, it's a job. Same thing like I do. When I travel, I'm on stage. I do, I'm doing a job. Yeah, but there's that saying that, like, the moment you find a job you love, you never have to work a day again in your life. Oh, no. You're going to have to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I well, I'll, tell, I'll tell you personally, what the second we walked on the ship on Ship Up, I mean, he, like, I was with my cousin, Cindy. And she, the second we heard, like, heard him, because he was DJing right in the middle when everybody was coming on the ship and doing everything, I mean, he just got us dancing, and he pulled my, Cindy right up on, on stage. And I was like, she was just, like, in her glory Wait, up that there. was you? I saw that video. Yes, that was him. That was the Listen. moment we got on the ship. Like, from the moment we got on the ship to the moment we left, this man was, like, made everybody just Thank nonstop you. move. Now, I didn't realize that was happening. I'm being real honest with y'all. I got that all, <laughs> I get that all the time. The craziest thing, I'm DJing. DJ Cool walks up to where I'm DJing at and says, yo, you are nice. Yo, you got me up there dancing. <laughs> I'm like, yo, okay, man, how you doing? I said, yo, what's your name, my man? He said, I'm DJ Cool. I almost fucking melt. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Cool come up to me and tell me I'm a good DJ? Wow. Thank you, my man. Salute. Shout out to DJ Cool. Salute. Yes. I mean, what's that? I mean, do you, like, as as artists, do you, do you guys, like, always have, that, like, a little bit of self-doubt where you're like, ah, I'm not, I'm not yes, good? Yes. I, I have. I don't know about other DJs. I still get nervous. I still get like the before every show, for every show, and because it's that you don't want to mess up, you don't want to play the wrong song, you right. don't want to the turntables go bad. Something with the computers now, you know anything can happen. You know, a computer could crash. Anything could, you could make a mistake and not turn your Wi-Fi off, and then all the pop-ups come up. <laughs> <you know? laughs> So, you know, things happen. Oh, sorry. Let me stop the record for a second. I've got a mail yeah. I have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know. so are you still DJing? Me? No. Not right now. I have a family. Oh, that's right. Girl. He's a grandfather, DJ born. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Oh, so my girl. Congratulations. My so wait. I have a stepson that's 10, and I just had a baby girl. Congratulations, What's Isaac. Like? It's awesome. It's awesome. It's really cool. Were you like, when, were you like oh, no. No, I wanted it. It was basically, it was planned. It was planned. That's so awesome. Because oh, usually, usually it's like, oh, no. <laughs> no. And then when I you, was, and the, like, really everybody excited. that's. Actually, I, I, I don't have any I kids. Cried. <laughs> so you want to hear a terrible story about me? What's up? <laughs> oh, my. So my sister, like, God bless her. Like, she had to go through, like, hell just to get pregnant. So um, the day she was having the baby, like, my sister's very, um, like, alpha. She's okay. like, you know, it's going to go this way. This is what's going to happen. You know, I'm going to have a natural childbirth. I'm going to do all this stuff. And then, like, obviously, like, shit always goes wrong. Yeah. Right. So the hospital is only, like, two blocks away from here. So I was up there at, like, 11 p.m. at night. I stayed till 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. They're like, oh, she probably has, like, 17 more hours of labor. I go home. I'm home maybe a half hour. And my mother's like, you got to get back to the hospital. She's going in right now. So she goes in. And I know my sister went through hell, 18 months of hell just to even get pregnant. And now she's going to have this baby and there's some complications. And I got sober in 2010. I stopped drinking, right? And other stuff because it was just too good. I really enjoyed <laughs> it. I really enjoyed all those things. Me too. <laughs> so the baby gets delivered, happy, healthy, mom's healthy, baby's healthy. We can't see her because she had to get operated on. So I came back to work down here and every, the rest of the family stayed up there. <clears throat> and right around like 530, I get a text message from her saying, you know, will you sit with me? I'm not allowed to be alone while Will, who's my brother-in-law, takes a shower. And I, by the I think by the time I said yes, I was already up there. Mm -hmm. And I walked in the room and I saw her in the bed and I saw this little bassinet that they put next to the bed. And I just made like the ugly cry face. <laughs> and I went like, and I went, 
like the real like <laughs> ugliest cry face. And she goes, are you going to cry? And I went, I think so. <laughs> oh. And I cried for 45 minutes. Thanks, man. Wow, that's nice. And I held, and I and she she's like, do you want to hold him? I'm like, I don't want to hurt him. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I didn't want to hold my girl yeah. either. I didn't want to hold her at first. So I sit there at the bottom of her bed. There's a chair facing her bed. I'm sitting there. I'm holding, they named him Colton Ledger. So I'm holding Colton, weeping like a like a 12-year-old girl. And she's taking photos of me <laughs> while it's happening. She sent them to my fiance. It's her background on her phone. It's just me holding the baby. Wow. Like ugly crying over it. So I, and I try to tell my friends, like, it's not, it, it's my nephew, but still at the same time, like, it was the most amazing it is thing the ever. The most amazing. Yo. I was doing this, and I know one day he's going to grow up to tell me to go fuck myself. But, <laughs> but at that time, until then, uh, it was amazing. I was doing this show, and I think my son called me and said, "Daddy, we on our way to the hospital." I said, "No, hold up, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> this is not happening right now. I'm on the stage." And I'm the music is playing with the crowd is going bananas. That wasn't an email. No, I'm on the stage talking to him like, tell her to wait. Tell the baby no, do not come wait. out of the Cross her legs. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh man, I, I I I think I got the first red eye out. Really? The I made them change my flight. Right after the show. I left right after the show to go right home to see Where them. were you? I don't know. I'm high, dude. <laughs> So how but far away? I was, I was awesome two plane rides away. You had a you were a layover away. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, that was terrible. So is it? So are you? So do you live in Hazelton? No, I live in Bloomsburg now. Oh, I'm, did you ever go to Sesame Street? Oh God, yes. Sesame Street with the block parties. Yeah, oh, I was there once. Yeah, I was there yeah, once too. <laughs> I couldn't go. Sesame back. Street, we having block parties? <laughs> yes, they used yes. to. Yeah. Oh. Oh, they they yeah. Oh, they would shut it down. There'd be thousands of people yeah, there. About to shut oh, that down. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> They get Probably crazy. because of people Kids like me just... when I was in college, <laughs> like back in the early 2000s. To... No, I went to Elizabethtown, but we oh, okay. used to go to visit my friends. There was at, like, nothing Bloom. wrong with visiting I had a lot Bloom. Of friend, yeah, yeah, I had a no. lot of friends that went to Bloom, so I was up there every weekend. Yeah, and well, it was a place to be. You went to the block party. <laughs> if there was one time a year you went to Bloomsburg, you went to the block party. Yeah. I, was at, I was at Sesame Street <laughs> once, and my buddy, who's now like a neurosurgeon, um, they were like, cops, and he picked up a half keg. Over his head like Donkey Kong <laughs> and ran into the woods, threw it, and said, run in the house. And we all got under the couch. Oh, God. I don't have Cops any away. Like big that. couch. It was big. We were all big. It was like it was like a futon. And we went over and then we, we like we threw draperies on it. So they wouldn't like if they were like flying through the flashlights. <laughs> like, yeah. I love to see that. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, don't say a word. And he's now like a heart surgeon. He's like, but I mean, literally like Donkey Kong. Like full keg <laughs> through it, and I was like, I stopped. I was running, and I saw him doing. I stopped because <laughs> I've never seen anything like that in impressive, my life. Impressive. <laughs> I said, you just do that like a fucking video game. <laughs> He's like, get inside. <laughs> um, so how old? How how old is your daughter now? She's eight months. She'll be nine. Oh, you just so yeah. wait. So you had her in what? June, July, May, May twentieth. So my nephew was born May second. Really? <gasps> oh. Oh Maybe my God! We're gonna have friends. to show each other photos. While my fiance was giving birth, I was watching um, the Cavaliers Warriors game finals. <laughs> you know what I was watching? I had it on the TV. I'm like, push, I'm watching it on TV. Yeah. <laughs> push, throw, push, throw. So, <laughs> what I was watching at 11 o'clock at night when she was in labor was uh, Jimmy Kimmel talking about his son having a heart problem. <laughs> Remember yeah. that? Oh yeah. gosh. He talks about that That's sometimes. Right. So now, but it was the night it happened. So oh, we're right. all sitting there going like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Like. I was just watching The Real Housewives when I was well, giving birth watch. both times. <laughs> what do you give it, birth? It calms me down. <laughs> Push. Wait, no. <laughs> I oh, I plane, saw that episode. We're good. We can fly faster. <laughs> what? So what? So what? I was on the now, plane. Now, is this your first grandchild? Yes, yeah, my first grand. So what was it like walking in? Like, did you go to the hospital like immediately? Uh, I went right to the hospital. I I dropped my back. The um, car service took me to my house. I jumped in my car. I don't even remember starting the car. Just shoo. you didn't. You ran with it. <laughs> Flintstones. You pushed style. it like yeah. Flintstones. Yeah, Flintstones style. I went right to the hospital, and I got there. I stood outside and I smoked a blunt in front of the hospital. <laughs> you know, because no, why not? You know, it's better got, than Xanax. I got to get myself motivated to see my granddaughter because I got to the hospital, I almost broke down. But that's okay. 
Oh yeah, it's fine. I know. Yeah. I or do you I ever feel lie. like that do. moment where you're like, you still, it, do you look at I her and just do. cry? Yeah, I do. And and like, aw, I do. As a dad and as care. a grandfather, do you <laughs> feel like you're not old enough? Every woman listening to this enough? right now is like, aw. I know hey. it's so cute. No, um, no, I'm saying like, do you? Because even me as like a mother, do you feel like I'm not old enough to be responsible for like? children <laughs> i mean and like do Sometimes you feel i feel that way old yeah. enough as a dad and as a grandfather do you feel like holy shit i'm a grandfather like i'm too cool to be but a see, grandfather there's no book <laughs> the, to be a parent there's no real nobody can tell you how to raise your children right mm-hmm. nobody can tell you how to keep your household nobody can tell you how to deal with your spouse all this come you with time, you just, learn it and you like grow an instinct, with it. I guess, yeah. yeah, yeah. You just grow with it, you know. And I didn't know that I was gonna have three kids that don't drink. Well, smoke. drink. We drink. They drink once in a while. <laughs> You're responsible. Responsible, yeah, real responsible yeah, kids. Responsible. See what Pennsylvania did to you? You made you responsible. Yeah, you can drink and still be uh, yeah. responsible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no police problems, no <laughs> DUI problems, no baby mama problems, no, you know, n- no all the problems that people have, I don't have no problem with my truth. So what do you, what do you, I know families that are very like strict and very, you know, like, and there's and there's love, but there's still like the kid yeah. that just goes there. and does something stupid that was, shit. That was there. I'm that was strict, but there. I got leeway. There's leeway with me. You know, you got to learn. So what? What? Learn. So what do you think that you did differently as a parent? I was strict, but I left leeway for them to learn their mistakes. So it wasn't like you were always trying to protect them from. No, 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 no. I wasn't always protect. I was always going to be protecting them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I we're past, but I left a little way so they can know that this is wrong. Right. You're gonna learn this on your own because a lot of people don't realize that when you open up the door and let your kids go outside, you're not holding their hands. And you can't watch them. You don't see them. So they gotta learn on the outside what you taught them on the inside. I hope it follows them on the outside because it's a dangerous world out there, dude. I mean, at the beginning for you to do that as a parent, is that does that make you nervous? Very nervous. I mean, any parents would be nervous and letting their kids go outside first. You know, but you know in your heart that the teaching you taught them inside, pray that they take it outside with them. Are you, are you going to teach your daughter things that, that you don't think your dad did right? Huh? <laughs> like, so, because, because, like you said, what? like you said, like, not, there's no, no book for it, no, right? Yeah, and no, it, yeah, no, yeah, you're right. There's I was no, kind of being a smart ass. No, 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 no <laughs> that's cool. I, can, no, I, no, I have a stepson now that he's going to junior high next year. So I have really? to like actually like you know let him, you know. So how old? He's ten. My he's man 10. Liam. He's, he's ten right now. So he's how long? Soon. How long have you been with with uh, my girl? Fiance, yeah, six years. And she's so beautiful. That's my. So girl okay, right so there. Liam's been in your life since he was four. Three, four, yeah, three, four years. Old. So I mean, what was what was that like? Th- 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 this is not supposed to sound poopy, but like. You know, helping raise what the someone hell else's is poopy, kid. like shitty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I think. Sometimes Thanks, white boy. Sometimes, Thanks, white boy. <laughs> that's all right. Sometimes I think like the proper way to say it is dirtier. <laughs> oh Jesus! Means, <laughs> well, nobody I ever th- said you're changing a poopy diaper. I think that oh, yeah. that yeah. tells. I, I change them all the time now. <laughs> well, do, you, do you do you do the that a boy? <laughs> but I don't mind it. You know, it's you know, it has to get done. No, <laughs> I don't so, want to walk around. With boy, a you you raised your son to be a man. That's for sure. That's what it sounds like. You know what? And two, I thank you for saying that. And I raised my daughter to be, you know, you know. One day she actually came to me in a club and told me, "Thank you for being so hard on me." Really? In a club with DJ Cash Money was DJing. She came to me and said, "Daddy, you know what? You was real hard on me, but I really appreciate it because it made me who I am now." See, I think, I think, I think children will come back one day because I just told my mom like a month ago. Like my mom and I are like two North Poles, like, and we do it because we're so alike, right? You know, she's like she shoot first, aim later, and that's how I am too in some in some respects because you know she's from West Side and you know she was. She's the only girl that, you know, would like punch a guy in the face and not worry about it. <laughs> He'd be scared. It's true. I and love she was her. and she was and she was she was under 100 pounds and everybody was afraid of her. Like she was the girl that could hit the home run over the over the right. You know what I mean? Like she was just that tough. And now she's a teacher. So now she deals with all these these kids who like go through all this shit and and you know, she, like they don't have a some of them don't have clothes, so she goes and buys them clothes. 
like some of them, mm-hmm. mom and dad are on drugs. So my, 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 my mom will like help them. Like, Oh, you don't have no swim shorts. Like I'll help you out. Like, you know, shh, don't tell anybody. Um, but I finally said to her, I said, you know, I don't, I don't know if kids tell their parents this. I said, but you did a good job. I'm good. My sister's good. We don't hurt people. We don't break the law. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I look at it too. like you're you know, like, not... you're a bitch. <laughs> you're a terrible bitch, <laughs> but I love you and you did a great job I and you agree. should be proud of that. And, and, and she, I think she's, I, I think she blew me off after. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to say the words she said, but she doesn't take compliments well. She was like, ah, fuck off. And, she, and then she like left my house. <laughs> but I, I, but, but to you, I mean, it's amazing that, that, you know, dad's, like all the lessons he taught you are, are transferring yeah. over to be and a I good person. And I see that every day. Yeah, I do see that every day. I do do you also have a party party that's like, like my that. dad does that? And God damn it. Yeah, I, yeah, I call Where you do dad too. things? Yeah, I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> What's a dad thing that you do? What's a dad thing I do? Yeah, like your dad. My dad? Yeah, because sometimes I catch myself saying stuff that my dad would say, and I'm like, oh, God. Oh, yeah. Like, I asked for the kids where the clicker was the other day, and I'm like, I fully <laughs> transformed into my mother, <laughs> the clicker. Uh, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, that would be a question you have to ask my fiance. Mm-hmm. That I have to do a she Will she go, that's something your dad said? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She does it all the time. <laughs> so are you I gonna, don't catch on to it right away, but she does. So are you going to spoil the hell out of your granddaughter? What? <laughs> she was going to be here right now. Well, why wasn't she? She stay home, my mom. Yeah, I, we wouldn't. We would have done the podcast. We would have just fawned over her granddaughter. When she's home, she want her granddaughter. Yeah, so like, now what's now what's there. her name? Ivy. Ivy. Why Ivy? Ivy because I wanted um, my my child to have you know my my initials. So Isaiah Ivy. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was it. That. Yeah. You didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's and a good one. Tanya and Tanya was fine with it. And she's like, as long as she can have a middle name, it's May. I'm like, all right, Ivy May. Oh, that's, oh, that's adorable. adorable. Oh, no. May. That's her. That's her middle name. That's her mom's. It's her grandmother's. That so it's just nice. passed. That's down. awesome. Wait, and you didn't know that? No. <laughs> <laughs> just found out like y'all found out. <laughs> so what? So what's what's next? Are you gonna get back into DJing? I want to. Maybe too. eventually. My sister wants me to, you know, do shows with her and stuff like that. They used to be a tag team. Yeah, we used to be called INF. Yeah, but, but t- that's a supplemental income to get diapers. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Mm-hmm. But then I'm away from her then, you know? I don't want to miss her growing up, so. Oh, it's my like God, me, you were the uh, nicest man in the world. It's just like <laughs> me, man. I, I can't Boy, what'd to... you do? You raised the nicest man in the world. I can't miss I I, oh, I, I really can't miss her growing so up right nice. now. They are very respectable. Everybody loves them. I mean, I... I try to get along with everybody, but if you, mm. you know, you... Well, there's certain shit circumstances. On you, shit on you, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's only fair. Yeah, exactly. I've, you know, so. <laughs> I'm not a big Bible guy, but eye for an eye, I'm okay exactly. with that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it. So what? So what's what's going on with you? What, what's what do you what like? What are dates coming up? Big events? Oh uh, man, the '90s tour. If you missed it last year or in two years ago, please catch the '90s. I love the '90s. Were you on the tour up up here? <clears throat> Which one? At Montage. At Montage, yeah. Of course. No, no, no. Oh. No. Okay, see, my son. Let's ask the son. Because no, they had TLC there. TLC, oh, Naughty yeah, by that's Nature. The, yeah. That's the, I no, love Naughty that. wasn't. I would have loved to see Naughty by Nature. But well, Naughty by Nature is going to be at Cove Haven next month. Well, that's all right, because we don't okay, have Champagne Towers to get into. We have two tours going on. It's I Love the 90s, which is our tour, Salt right. and Pepper's tour, Vanilla Ice. And then we have the I Love the 90s party continues tour, which is TLC, Naughty by Nature, Black Street, um, a real nice group of people. You know, so is that what the ship was? It was both of those coming together? Both of those coming mm-hmm. together. It was amazing. When I tell you it was amazing, it was just simply amazing. So how long are you on tour for now? Hey, it's it, it's been two years, and the way I'm looking at the calendar, it's going on another year. Are you having, the, ti- are you having are the time demand- of your life? Yes, I am. To see everybody happy and for me to go home and be happy with my grand, I'm having a great life. My granddaughter, I'm having a great life. So what's, so what, just for people who don't know, what's tour life like? (sighs) Well, I think it, I, and if I could speak for myself here, when I was backstage with All for One at the Bethlehem, in Bethlehem and all the other times that I've been back there. It's kind of, um, I'm assuming, a lot different than what it was in the 90s because nobody, 
not everybody's drinking and people are very respectable. Like, and it just seems like what I've, re- what I've read in the magazines in the nineties that it's totally different. Well, it seems like I don't back hate then it. Was about it. Debauchery we, and- like now we like more like lay back to having fun with it, enjoying our life and just enjoying it. Just join the fans being happy, us being on stage. Salt and Pepper been on stage for 30 years. They're still and killing it, dude. They're still mm-hmm. killing it. Yeah. They are. Kit and Play, Coolio, Tone Low, Young MC. They've been on these stages for a long time, and they still... And the fans, like Rob Bay said, when we play our music, it's like we playing it for the first time because the fans going bananas and, that, and loving it. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe how crazy the the because I went to I love the nineties up at over the summer, and it was just like holy shit! Like everybody's into this mm-hmm. because they the nineties music. Yeah. I I couldn't I just couldn't as believe long as they're it. They're on the east coast. I usually go out to the shows and stuff like the that. The nineties music would never die. This music now, you will play Tupac and Biggie twenty years from now. These new groups, you won't even hear their songs after two years. Yeah, Snoop was saying what, what did, Snoop, you'll hear Snoop. Hey, shout out to Snoop. Can he, he to smoke you, with you again? Did you see the <laughs> did you see the video with Snoop doing the mumble rap stuff where he's like, He's like, yeah. what is that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you do you think that is there so like what happened? Did it get corporatized? Did it like cause here cause I'll tell you one thing, right? Like we like the guy who runs the studio here, Jimmy Reynolds, he loves getting multi tracks of music. Okay. And he got uh, he got the Chronic multi-tracks and he got Doggy Styles multi-tracks. And it has every instrument that they played on. So you can solo like whatever you want, just the vocals. You can solo just the drums. Snoop has acoustic guitars. He has... Snoop is very talented. I'm telling you, like, uh, there's all this Snoop stuff on the album that you didn't very, even realize was there. Very talented, man. Very talented, man. Shout out to Snoop. So, what's, so where did it deviate? It deviated when I said hip hop was dead. <laughs> is there hope? There's some. There's, there's some still real there's artists. Always some Kendrick hope. Lamar, yeah. J Cole. J Cole. I like Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Is he? Is there's he? Always, there's hope. He there's opened hope. the Grammys, right? Yes, that was amazing. phenomenal. Yeah. Kendrick there's did an amazing and Kendrick job. Kendrick was also the first one to do a, um um a college bowl game. Oh really? Yeah, he did a halftime show for college bowl. I forget who played. Was it Alabama? I don't know. You're, I don't, I, oh, no one watches sports. Dude, you're looking at a dude no who makes sports? videos. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I think yeah, it was Alabama. I Snapchat at the Super Bowl. I'm like, this hockey game's intense. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about that Super Bowl right now. <laughs> Why, are you a Patriots guy? No. No. I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers guy. And I'm shout outs to um, Philadelphia for winning that game. But. That's a good game. What, what cable I got? Direct. Uh, oh, Direct TV? Dish. Dish. Oh. Dish. Went out. Yo, Dish. Dish. Check this out. You owe me some money. Yeah. Make sure this go live to Dish. Yeah. Dish, you owe me some money. Because when the game came on, I ain't have no TV. A lot my of people service didn't. went out. We're streaming. Yeah. Everybody was up there with 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 brooms yeah. sweeping no, up their satellite. My younger son Malik and his wife Tanya, his fiance Tanya, they put their phones and computers together and put it to my smart TV and it worked. But <laughs> The funny thing is, once the game they won, once Philly won, my TV pops back on. <laughs> we kept going upstairs. Yo, Dish, you owe me money we for that, We kept going upstairs bro. to check the other TV to see if it was working. And yeah, no y'all second. gave me a good exercise. Once, so, even, once we're walking out the door, <laughs> you know, live TV. So the interesting thing is, is that DirecTV was bought by Apple, right? <laughs> yeah. Apple is giving away free Apple TVs when you sign up for DirecTV. No. So when it's just like this new thing <laughs> yeah, that they're doing, right? Okay. Yeah. So on Facebook, so my brother in law has direct TV. Like the first play when they're going in for their first touchdown, it goes gone. He's the biggest Philadelphia Eagles fan. So I'm on Facebook and everybody's going, fuck direct TV, fuck, <laughs> fuck dish, fuck all that. Everyone switched over to their Apple TVs to watch the game. So, it, like, streaming on the internet was totally fine. But uh-huh, if you yeah, wanted exactly. to get the signal from the sky, mm-hmm. no bueno. Oh, so they did that to everybody. I, I don't people, know. Yeah, yeah. I it don't happened, know. It, it happened to a lot of people. There was yeah. tons of people who, like, anybody who had a dish oh, wow. was furious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know we was. Yeah, we had we were, food. Yeah. We had... 
<laughs> so then, and then you had to watch it on an iPad. <laughs> no, but I mean, it came nice and clear on my TV. But the way we had to go to do it, yeah, the process, we the didn't process have to do of all doing that, that you know? we shouldn't have to do it. Just press a button and watch the game because that's what you mm-hmm. pay for. Yep, pay all. Then this it kept money freezing for it, yeah. and oh, buffering. Man. Yeah, yeah. Three times during the game, they had to go out in a, in a ladder with a shovel <laughs> and just start knocking <laughs> off the dish. Yo, and, all right, it's on. <laughs> So so the tour is going to go indefinitely? Yeah, the tour and ship hop. People, I know y'all keep asking me when the next ship hop is. I will let everybody know when I know. I'm quite sure Jimmy and Tommaso <laughs> will get it out to everybody. So, ship hop fans, just wait to 2019. It's going to be even better than last year. I promise. This is DJ Bourne. I can't thank you guys enough for being here. I can't thank you guys enough for having us. I can't believe you came all the way in this weather for this. It's because he loves me. (laughs) Stacy, my girl. Did you drive? Wait, did you drive? Yeah, Mm -hmm. I love driving. Mm -hmm. (laughs) If you could spend most of your day driving, would you? Yeah. With your daughter in the back seat? No. I used to fall asleep in the car, so my mom used to always drive her around so I'd fall asleep. I don't need to drive her around and fall her Vacuum cleaner? No, nothing. Mm -hmm. Lay her in her crib, falls asleep. Yo, listen, this is... I don't know how to say it, but God actually bring me a beautiful angel. Like, I mean, she is just she doesn't cry. She, she doesn't don't cry. Fuss. She just want to have fun. She it's don't. How did total you have opposite a... of what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, <laughs> she sleeps. I had the night, night. You know, I had really. All she want is to eat, use the bathroom, and play. Never like a scream. Never. No, only when only only when something's wrong. That's not going to work. Really Nothing's wrong. wrong. I mean, is, I mean, is mom phenomenal too? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is a, kind of a loaded, stupid question for me to ask. <laughs> is your fiance a good mother? Oh yeah. She's <laughs> Please awesome. answer this. I'm gonna I'm say it like this because <laughs> his fiance got a great family. You know how family feud with each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the son's mother don't get along with the girl's right, 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 right. Somebody don't get this whole family from her family to my family. It's like we knew each other for so many years, and we just got mad love for each other. When we see each other, it's just happy to see each other. How often do you guys do family get-togethers? The last one we had was Christmas. How many people? Uh, not a lot, but you know, I have a small house, so it seems like there's a lot of people in it. Everybody's so far. <laughs> I do. Apart I need. From I, I tell every. I, I tell Tanya every. Year, I'm like, we need to get a bigger house. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> eventually, we're, but with we're renting now. We're gonna buy a house. Birthday. <laughs> first birthday is going to be huge. Yeah. 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 Are we invited? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, definitely. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully where I got to go? Bloomsburg. House. I can go to Bloomsburg. Hopefully, it's at the bounce house. Yeah. What's Woo-hoo. the bounce house? A little, a little kitty bounce house. Out yeah, there. I'm the fat. I can do like three bounces <laughs> and then I'm that? winded. <laughs> In the Columbia Mall. <laughs> Where the Columbia Mall at? I've been to the Columbia Mall. It's like three stores in there, yeah. And one There's, store is there is house. like three stores in Victoria's there. Victoria's but... Secret, Bath and Body, and the Bloom House. <laughs> that's all you need. Now, how did Victoria's Secret and a bounce house get together? Well, that's uh, where now, mom puts the kid while she goes shopping. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, basically. That's a good well, one. Well, maybe get you in there to yeah. DJ it and then yeah, it'll right. turn up. Mommy needs something for daddy. Go jump around a little bit. <laughs> um, no, my dad races cars and he races down by Bloomsburg. Uh, did oh, you ever really? hear New Media? Yeah, yeah. Catawissa? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he races, oh, okay. he races okay. dragsters there every weekend. Yeah. Are, you, are you a car guy? No. All right, good enough. <laughs> no, I'm not. They're invitation retracted. I'll go I'll go Do you want to go? Are you a golfer? I love yeah. cars. Let's yeah. go. I love golfing. Do I look I like golfing. a golfer to you? Not. Yeah. I'm not bad. Really? I'm yeah. not. I, I'm not good. <laughs> oh, good. Both of you are not Tiger Woods, but y'all can go golf. I like going. I like, I like drinking, having a casual cigar, hanging out with my boys. You know. I. I'll watch you drink. <laughs> I'll drive yeah, the fine. cart. Hey, you can do that. We'll be good. I'm I like, love DDs. I'm like, hold on. There's a donut you never asked for what that we're going to do. DD. Designated driver. Oh. Damn. <laughs> I'm high, Not y'all. to be confused with the duff. Um, no. Thank you so much for yeah. being yeah, here. Thank you, thank guys. You. So, Stacey. so much. Yeah. Thank I can't so reach much. over to you, Isaiah. Love. Love, love, love. And so Tyler? Tyler. Oh, you, do you guys have Tyler. any, like, like social media stuff that we can... Like where where can people find you guys and, and hit me up on Facebook original DJ Born on Facebook and you can hit me up on Instagram DJ Born zero one. I'm on Instagram um, Izzy two three two five and Facebook Isaiah Roper. 
And it's all pictures of your daughter. It's all pictures of me and my daughter. <laughs> Love it. And Tanya and Liam. I mean, I forget them. <laughs> and Tyler is, what's your Instagram? Tyler underscore Charming. Tyler under, how do you spell your last name? T-E-R-M-I-M-I-N-I. N-I. And I got to say this before I leave. If y'all want a dope, off the hook, back in the days, 90s DJ, I play this new music too, but I love my 90s. Hit me up. What's your wait, uh, give me one artist that you play from today? Today? Yeah, today. J. Cole. Okay. King of Lamar. All right. Kendrick so Lamar. So, there's hey, not, so it's not Carly like totally B, done. Carly B, yo. Yes, you're Cardi doing B's your awesome. thing, girl. You keep going. <laughs> Don't let nobody get you down. I like your style. Carly B. What did she just ahead. say recently? She just said something recently. Don't I don't know. She but, says a lot of stuff. Yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> Her name Much her, love to Carly B. Much love yes, to Carly B. Yes, I love her. Her yeah, real yeah, name yeah, sounds Cardi like B. something from Harry Potter. I don't know what Hermione? Yeah, her real name. <laughs> it sounds like da, 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 like you can wave the wand and stuff. But yeah, I love Cardi B too. That's There's awesome. a video I put up with I, I was playing Carly B and Cheryl and Sandy, which is salt and pepper, they was going bananas. Y'all should watch that video on Facebook. It's real funny. <laughs> real good. All right, we're out. Thank you guys. We're out, man. Thanks, guys. Thank you.